Hi guys, hope you're well. So I am going to hold your hand through preparing, making and roasting the most amazing Christmas roast hat with black pepper and marmalade, which is a classic, it's delicious. So what we have here is a four, four and a half kilo chunk of gammon. This has already been salted, but it's not cooked. So what we do is we put it in a massive pot, let it sit in that water for maybe an hour or two, get rid of that water. And that's not cooked, right? So we need to poach that, put it on a heat with some root vegetables, carrots, celery, you can put garlic in there if you want, a little bouquet garni or a mixture of herbs. I've got some orange zest in mine, peppercorns, and we'll slowly poach that for an hour and a half. Now I've done that. So what we have here now is the skin attached to the fat. So I'll remove the string like that, and then I need to just pull them out like this. Now what we're gonna try and do is keep as much as the fat on this as possible. We now are just gonna take a little pride in removing the skin, but also evening out the fat. So it's basically about that much all the way around. So we've trimmed that skin off. Now I wanna use the knife to lightly score the fat. And what that's gonna do is two things. It's gonna give you this kind of texture that allows the oven to render the fat quicker and go crispier. And once you've gone across the whole ham, then simply turn it across the other way and we'll go in a crisscross. It's really easy, it's really fun. Don't spend hours and hours doing this. You've got way too much to do at this time of year. So now I'm gonna put this in the oven for about 20 minutes just to get the fat going and sizzling, right? So the oven is at 170 degrees Celsius, which is 325 Fahrenheit. And then I'll come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, lovely people. So it's had 20 minutes. And in that 20 minutes, it's just enough time to get a sizzle on. We're gonna take our little spoon out. You can angle the tray a little bit. So we've already got juices coming out and we can start the basting process. What we've done is just open up this texture to receive flavor. Now, you can see I'm dusting this quite generously with black pepper and I like that kick. Salt is already in this story so we don't need to go anywhere near salt. So on the marmalade, just get that on the top and the heat will just start to naturally melt it anyway. So as time goes on, it gets thicker and thicker until it can't run off anymore. And that is when you achieve perfection. You can see now, can't you, that by creating those little crisscrosses, it's clinging on black pepper and marmalade. An amazing combination with that beautiful ham. Look at that. So this goes in the oven now for an hour and it's gonna go back in at 170 degrees Celsius, 325 Fahrenheit. And that temperature is a good one because it's not too hot, it's not too cool. And over that hour, it's slowly gonna caramelize and kind of get tighter and thicker and stick to it more and keep glazing it until it is a thing of beauty. Right, back in the oven. Okay, so this bad boy's been going for about half an hour. Let's have a look. Come on! Look at that. Let's get basting. You can get some of those juices going with a spoon by all means. What I've done is get a load of rosemary and tie it up and create a rosemary brush. Now you might think I'm mad, but I'm gonna use the rosemary brush to not only impart flavor, but also pick up that lovely marmalade and put it back on the ham. It smells amazing, oh my lord. Back in you go, another 20 minutes to go. So that beautiful ham has had a lot of love, care and attention. It's been poached and it's been roasted and glazed. Here we are, oh my lord. Look, <laughs> look at that. Guys, look at it. Absolutely stunning. Shining, salty, sweet gorgeousness. So let's get this onto a board. Now, while that is still warm, just put the last remnants of that amazing marmalade on top. As it cools down, it will kind of firm up. I want you to go back to your black pepper. And trust me, a beautiful dusting is gonna make a massive difference. It's gonna be so good. Guys, look at that, come on. That's what we wanted. Juicy, juicy inside. And that gnarly, caramelized, golden outside. And no matter how you serve that, whether it's with a big old buffet, salads, cheeses, breads, or with some mashed potato or fried egg or some bubbling squeak, that, my friends, is one hell of a beautiful Christmas roast ham. Enjoy.
This year, I'm cooking my bird two ways for maximum flexibility. Most people's Christmas meals are centered around this, the mighty turkey. People are really thinking like I am, like what size turkey do I get, a big one, a small one? I want to show you what I'm going to do this year. I'm a massive lover of tradition at Christmas, but this year, I'm going to change it up for the first time and I'm really excited about it. So, the way I'm doing my turkey this year is in two parts. So I'll use one stuffing for both the crown and the legs. It's going to be amazing. They both cook at the same time. They both cook to perfection. They're both really easy to serve. And we're going to use the trivet, we're going to use the giblets, we're going to make gravy. This is going to be fantastic. Let's get going. So, we have this amazing stuffing. And take that neck skin and just slip it in there. It's super easy to do, but what you get is a lovely plump side of the turkey like that. That is the crown, and you might just want to do that, and it will be amazing. But this is where the fun starts, because I was kind of thinking, OK, what do we do with the legs? When you go to Italy, you have the porchetta, the rolled, beautiful loin and belly of pork. And I'm thinking, I want to do that with my beautiful turkey legs. So I've got my butcher to take the legs off when he did the crown and debone the leg. Then I can take this stuffing, use this to kind of patch any gaps, roll it up, and that's what you get. Don't worry if it's not perfect. The flavors are going to be amazing. So the great thing about this is the crown and those rolled legs are going to cook at exactly the same time. Look at that. Get some of those amazing juices there. It looks absolutely sumptuous. Just kiss those with a little bit of honey, and that will just protect the lovely, crispy skin. Beautiful way to finish it. Let that rest for an hour. We'll start with the beautiful honey glazed rolled turkey leg. It's beautiful, it's juicy, it's a bit different. Let's have a little look at the crown here. That really is beautiful turkey crown. Look at that. That cross section of the white meat, the stuffing meat, the lovely gravy here. Hello. Come on, I know you smelt the gravy, didn't you? Yeah. You want to try it with the turkey? Yeah. Without doubt, the kids are the toughest critics. There you go. Mmm. The skin on the brown meat is so crispy. The brown meat's falling apart, it's juicy, and the stuffing it's really, really good. Can I have some more? Yeah. White or brown? Uh, brown. Cured gravel axe of salmon with beautiful beetroot, horseradish, lemon and dill. Ho, 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 ho. It's got Christmas written all over it. Delicious. Here we have a beautiful, sustainable fillet of salmon. Rock salt, brown sugar, lemon zest, great into the salt. Horseradish. This is hot and it's fragrant. And then a beetroot. Vodka. Three shots. Mix it up, and then we just rub it all over the salmon. Both sides. Turn it, wrap it up, pop it in the fridge for a day and a half, and let the fridge do all the hard work for you. Metallic, bauble red amazingness. I'm going to take a little deal. You can do this a week before Christmas, two days before Christmas. An amazing starter, ready to go. Look at the colour. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's have a little try. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Merry Christmas. With more and more of us eating less meat these days, the chances of you lovely people having a vegetarian around the Christmas table is very high. So let me give you the most incredible edible present that the veggies are going to kiss you for and the meat eaters are going to fight you for, introducing the one and only Veggie Petivier. It's the most incredible French-style pie, a parcel of puff pastry, crispy and gorgeous, with layer upon layer of amazing sweet, slow-roasted celeriac, creamy, gorgeous mushrooms, and even a little bit of sauce on the side. Guys, it starts here with celeriac. We're going to take the top off. You want to leave the skin on. Take some olive oil, give it a drizzle up, sea salt, lots of black pepper. Get your hands in there and have a little rub up. And when that starts to roast on the outside with the skin, it's going to be truly delicious. Now I'm going to wrap it in tin foil. Just put it over like that. And there you go. That now goes in the oven for an hour and a half. And we're going to cook it at 200 degrees Celsius, which is 400 Fahrenheit. And the flavors that will happen in here will be absolutely immense. Now it's time to make the sauce. A lovely bechamel style sauce with sweet leeks, garlic, and mushrooms. It's going to be a joy. So I have two leeks. The ends I'll just take off. 
Get your knife, run it down the length of the leek and just go as thin as you can. Let's get cooking. We're gonna put some butter, the white part of the leeks. Get yourself two cloves of garlic, slice it up. Garlic goes in. Look at that, it already smells amazing. We've got our standard button mushrooms and our chestnut mushrooms, but absolutely you can upgrade for wild mushrooms at this time of year. Whether you go for the cheapest mushroom or the most expensive, it's still blooming delicious. So in the pan with our mushrooms, we'll cook those for about 10, 15 minutes. And it's this stage of making a sauce that's gonna give you the oomph, the flavor. So I'm gonna use a teaspoon of English mustard, and then I'm gonna use two heaped tablespoons of just plain flour. That's your thickening agent. And then we're gonna let it down with 800 mils of milk. And as I add the milk, it will start to just get silkier. We'll let that simmer now, just enough time for me to get some herbs chopped up. So just finely slice the parsley. You can see it's nice and thick. I'm gonna turn off the heat. And there's one last ingredient, 120 grams of beautiful blue cheese. Have a little taste. Oh, beautiful. Now let's make the filling. Right, let's have a little look. Oh. Look at that, there you go. You see it's caramelized, it's shrunk a little bit, and then slice it like a piece of ham. Don't worry if it breaks, or if there's a few bits that sort of plop off. Get yourself a regular bowl, olive oil, and then just put the cling film through like that. Use your hand to push it into the corner. And now what I wanna do is take beautiful slices of the celeriac, place that just up the side like that. And it doesn't matter if you do this well or badly, right? Just line the side. Don't panic, don't stress and then a base like that. That is what you end up with. Then we're gonna go over to our sauce. Just put a little bit of that in there, and then again, layer of that celeriac, beautiful creamy sauce. So last layer, push it right around, and use those last little bits to make your topping. And then at this stage, we'll use that cling film. Just pull it tight, get yourself a little plate so you can weigh it down. And then if we put that in the fridge overnight, the fridge temperature is gonna make it really firm, and then it's really, really easy to turn into the most incredible pie. It's gonna be beautiful. This has been in the fridge, so it's firmed up. But then we need to encase it in some pastry. I'm cheating, I'm using all butter puff pastry. It's even rolled out for us. Take it as a square, like that, all the way. So we now have the base. I've got some egg yolks here. Take our filling, just turn it out into the middle of our pie like that. And then I'm gonna use another roll, and we wanna flap it on top. So line up and just go over. And this is almost like making the most incredible little Christmas present, right? Pat the top. We go to one side, right into the corner, define that shape. And we wanna cut about a centimetre and a half around the pie, like this. We don't have to waste this, right? You can put Parmesan in there, a bit of cayenne pepper, a few little twists, do a nice little nibble. Get yourself a little chair, come down to this beautiful pie's level. Get myself some flour. Take one finger, forefinger, you push it in, you take your thumb and forefinger and squeeze around it. And as you squeeze, pinch it at the end, and you get that. And what's great about this is it seals the two bits of pastry together. We'll put a little cross in there. That will let the steam out, and I'm gonna give it a really nice glaze. And this is gonna give it the most incredible bronze tan. This is a French pie that's come truly via Essex. Look at that tan, come on. And then I'll take my knife from the center and just turn it and score it. And I go back, and then I'll turn it and score it. You do not want to cut all the way through. Now, last but not least, a little bit of my offcuts. Cut a little circle out, find something round. You can just cut out that center part like that and then lay that over our little cross. And you can do that one, two days before Christmas. That is a celebration of a dish. Now, because it's Christmas, get yourself a wodge of rosemary, get some olive oil on there and dress it up. It's gonna smell nice, look nice. It's like a little wreath. That will be cooked at the bottom of the oven at 180 degrees Celsius, which is 350 Fahrenheit for two hours. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that, it's a thing of beauty. Oh, yes! This is a veggie dish that meat eaters will fight for. So good. Come on, a nice little drizzle of the sauce. Come on, just beautiful. Let's go for the end. Wowzers, your guests will not know what's happened. Merry Veggie Christmas.